Sports, Arts and Culture Minister Natim Tetwa says a large number of COVID-19 relief fund applicants in the sector have not qualified to receive funding after not meeting the criteria. The briefing comes after Mtetwa announced a 150 million rand relief fund for the sector. Now for a reaction on the story, I'm joined on the line by Tony Khoroge, an actor who has been calling for unity among the artists. Tony, lovely to speak to you once again. What is your reaction to the, the minister's announcement that a lot of the entries that were received did not meet the criteria because they were incomplete in many of the instances? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I, we, I, we're truly expecting this even the worst uh, when it comes to those kind of applicants because remember we did in a sector that is not united. It's the sector that doesn't have uh, representation in terms of organizations. Like with sports, it's a little bit easier. They have South Cork, and under South Cork, they have other organizations that are representing um, players within, within the sports fraternity. Within the arts, it's a bit of a problem because um, even the database will fail the department. Things like understanding who is an artist and who's not an artist. You have people who are taking chances, trying to send, um, uh, and I'm sure the department was dealing with a lot of those. And most of them would not under even understand why, what do they have to put on the paper of the application. So, I mean, which also disadvantages the artists who are out there who are really looking um, for a relief from, 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 from this fund that the minister has announced. And one of the things that happened is that most of the artists thought that, you know, when the president, when the honorable president firstly announced the issue of the 21 in lockdown, they thought maybe after 21 days, they will then go up, and then they will then go back to work and start resuming work. So they didn't really apply for those. Those who had contracts, they didn't really apply for the relief fund. So after the 21 day, they expired before the 21 day, then the honorable president then extended the, the lockdown. And obviously, the president to a, a panic mode, and then they started um, stopping contracts. Um, uh, and, and actually also, you know, then they started going into a mode of panic and starting not knowing what to do because they thought that they were going back to work and they're not going back to work. So it's not surprising that the minister, uh, the Department of Arts and Culture got, uh, like, they got, literally got about 6,000 applications out of millions of artists that we have in this country. And out of that 6,000 applications, only a few just went through. It's really heartbreaking, and I hope maybe the minister can consider this and really ask, organize uh, uh, structures within the industry to help help the artists to make sure that they get something from this relief fund. Uh, Tony, as you've rightfully said, the minister did mention the fact that because there isn't a federation and there isn't unity among the artists, it's not easy to streamline the, the application, nor is it easy to streamline the criteria and the standard of application that needs to be submitted in order for a favorable outcome. Only 232 have been recommended uh, for payment. There is a, a, an appeal process that the minister has opened up right now are many of the artists going to be appealing this? And if so, what is going to be different about the, the caliber of applications that they submit? I, I think um, it's a good thing that this has to be appealed. And obviously, there has to be now a reach out to artists. The artists have to be made aware that this kind of thing is happening. And they really need to, to, to work with, and then some of them, I know they have managers, some of them have agents, to work with the agents, to work with the managers, to help them. If maybe they cannot get to a point where they can be able to fill those forms correctly. So that at least we can have bulk of, and those who, oh, sorry, just the, oh, those who also belong to organizations, go to their organization and try to ask for help so that organizations can then go, there, instead of, people going there as an individual, but have the bulk of artists who fall maybe under, uh, let's say, in the music industry, in the acting fraternity, or those who are painters, to go into their, their organization and ask their organization to really help them 
to make sure that those applications get there and then they get, uh, they get approved correctly. Antonio, you have been in leadership in the, in the arts uh, fraternity. Why does there seem to be a lack of unity? There are various federations that have been lobbying for, for different policies and, and amendments to, to different bills. Why is there that there isn't still one voice that can speak for, for artists in the country? Well, people have different um, interpretations of, of what this unity should be. And I think that's where the problem is. And then in most cases, you'll find that now people want to run at organizations like political organizations. And in most cases, then you'll find then a lot of artists come from different organizations, obviously political organizations. They also want to put their organization's word or whatever they believe is correct politically to put it forth within the art fraternity. So most of those things, they bring about a, a, a disconnect within, within this unity that people are trying to build. And that's one of the problems. And the other problem is the issue of we still have, um, you know, um, a very self difference in terms of that. We're not working together. It might look out there like we're working together. You have black artists and white artists are working together. You see them together on television and so on and so forth. But in most cases, when you talk about organization, you'll find that an organization is either purely black or purely white, but they're all dealing with the same thing. And out of that, then you, then you get deeper into it and you realize that the difference in, in, these, in, 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 in these people is because they, they belong to different political organizations, and that's why there's all these, the other ones will, will be pulling that side and the other one will be pulling that side. And those are the factors that we get within the creative industry and why literally people do not really come together. That, that, that's the cut of why we're not getting there. And as far as uh, me, being concerned, I mean, me being working within the creative industry. Well, thank you so much for your input, uh, Tony. That's Tony Koroha, an actor, uh, responding there to the COVID-19 relief fund address. That